All right, again, today is Monday, the 28th of September, and I've asked people to go out to the P drive for the class and copy the folder 09-28-2015 to your desktop or your virtual desktop, wherever you're working on the actual assignments. And what, those, what, what that has in it, just so you can see this, these are all the same. We're going to build this thing three ways, but they all have the same file in there, fi three files in there. So I'll just go to this way one and open this up. All right. The JavaScript file just has the comment in there with the, with the information from the program. All right. Then we've got an HTML file that's got the same comment, and it's got a little bit of HTML in it. And we've got a very simple CSS file. All right. So we're going, to, we're going to write this program, and we're going to write it in three different ways. All right, just so you can see some of the differences between them, not to confuse you. The first example, including all of these comments that we have in here, so including 40 lines of comments, is going to have about another 240 lines in it. All right, so there's quite a bit of typing, and there's quite a bit to go over. When we get to the last iteration or the last version, we'll go down from a, having 240 lines to having less than 50. So you can see how you can, you can take your code and make it run much simpler, much crisper by changing some stuff around. Now, I've got it done already, as you'd probably guess. So what I want to do is I want to show you the, at least the, uh, where do I have it? So when we run it, this is what's going to happen. It's going to create for us 25 random numbers between 1 and 25. Okay? And once we do that, then we'll come up with a menu. It says we could type in a 0 right now if we wanted to end the program. I don't want to do that yet. We could type a 1 in here if we wanted to generate 25 new numbers. I don't want to do that yet. So I'm going to start from the bottom. All right? And I'm going to type in an 8. And I'm going to have it add those 25 numbers up for me, and that's the sum. Okay, then I'm going to tell it to give me the average of those 25 numbers, which is there. Then I'm going to tell it to find me the smallest value that's in there, which is 4. Then the largest value, which is in there, which is 92. And then I'm going to say, give me the array in descending order. So you'll notice we said 92 was our biggest and 4 was our smallest. You can tell by looking at that that it appears to be the case. All right, and we're going to also allow the user to print it out in ascending order. All right, then if we want to, we can print out the, so you, you just saw what the array looked like. There it is in ascending order, smallest to largest. But if we want to go back and be able to print out our original array again, we can still do that. All right, and if we want to generate 25 brand new numbers, we can do that. That's what we're going to end up doing in here today. Right. And to quit the program, we're just going to type in a zero, and we're done. Okay. Now, a couple things that I wanted to mention to you. You'll notice that with all of these examples, there are three files. From now on, so starting with this assignment, starting with this assignment, with assignment two, some of you did what I'm about to say in assignment one, and that's good, but you didn't have to. Bless you. But uh, there's a there's a whole. Uh, paper back there if you grab one, okay? All right. From now on, so for all the assignments that we do from now on, we're going to have a CSS file, we're going to have an HTML file, and we're going to have a JavaScript file. And we're writing unobtrusive JavaScript, which means all that we're doing with JavaScript inside of this H HTML file is we're including our JavaScript file. Not only that, all we're doing in our HTML file as far as CSS is including our CSS file. That's the way you should write, you, you should write code. All right. I have absolutely no idea, those of you who are in the class with Jim in the afternoon, what he is saying about this. So I'm not going to try to contradict anything that he's saying. Hopefully I'm not. But again, you should get used to the idea of writing your HTML in an HTML file, your CSS in a CSS file, and your JavaScript in a JS file. You'll notice that here, if you look up on the screen here, 
that's all my CSS. I just said make the background color kind of a medium blue and make my text color black. That's all that's in here. Literally, that's all that's there. And in my HTML file, I've got the typical stuff you'd put in an HTML file. But in the body, it just says put your name here so you can change that if you want to and add your own name there. And then there's just a script tag which calls main. That's all it's doing. All right, there's other ways that we could do this also. I could put a button in there and call main on the onClick event. There's a lot of different ways that this could be done. All right, but what I want us to do is to start looking at this file and thinking about how we'd write it. Okay, so it says in here, write a job, write a JavaScript program which includes user-defined functions. So you're going to create functions to do what? Well, it looks like in here there's about nine different things, which says to me you're going to have nine different functions. Does that make sense? All right, you're going to have a user-defined function to do each of these things. So the first user-defined function that you write will be a main. And ideally, all main will do is drive the program. Main is also known as a program driver. All right? And really what you're supposed to do main for lack of better words all right for lack of better words main is kind of like the conductor of an orchestra the conductor doesn't play anything but he or she tells people when to come in tell them how loud they should be how soft they should be etc so they're they're responsible for coordinating the entire orchestra in the same way main is going to be responsible for coordinating our program Okay, so we'll have very little actual code in main. All right. But we'll have a user-defined function that will randomly create 25 numbers for us and put them into an array. And we might call that function several times during the program. We'll have another function to show our array in original order. Another one to show it in ascending order. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Another one to show it in descending order, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, etc. Another one to show the largest element. Another one to show the smallest element. Another one to show the average size element. And another one to show the, the sum. So I think everybody gets this. But I just, I, again, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that we do. So I'm going to keep it real simple. Instead of having an array... that has 25 elements in it, just for a second, we're going to pretend that we asked for an array of five numbers. You with me? All right. So I'm just, I'm making these numbers up. They mean nothing. So there's our five numbers. Okay. So that'll be one function will be to generate those five numbers. And we'll put those five numbers into an array. And that's the array. So that, those are the five numbers in original order. All right. Again, these numbers themselves mean nothing. We'll write another routine then that will put those five numbers into ascending order. Well, what does that mean? That means it'll be 8, then 10, then 37, then 43, then 67. So that'll be in ascending order. All right. Then we'll go 67, 43, 37, 10, and 8. And that'll be our numbers in descending order. Does all that make sense? All right. Then we'll say, all right, uh, 67. Why 67? Because that's our largest array element. All right, then we'll have 8, which again, that will be our smallest array element. All right, then we'll add those together. I couldn't pick something easier. 67 and 43 is 110, 147, 157, 165, if I added right. And let's pretend I did. All right, so we'll have 165. And that will be the sum of the array elements. All right. 
Then I'll take that 165 and divide it by 5, which will give me 33. And that will be my average array element. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those are 7 right there of the routines that we have to worry about. Is there anything that I just went over that doesn't make sense? Please ask. <coughs> the question was, do you want to keep the original array? The answer is yes. And the way that we'll end up doing that is when we fill that original array, we're going to fill two arrays. One that's going to be that we're not going to change and one that we're going to change. Good question. Okay. But the stuff that's going on in here, again, I kept it simple. And I would recommend that if you were, let's just say I gave this as an assignment, okay? When I, when I was write, if I was writing this, I would originally, instead of making that array 25, I would make it 5. Make it something simple so that you're able to manually go ahead and take a look at it to see whether or not it's working. Do you really want to add 25 numbers up with a calculator when you, you, know, when you can just do 4 or 5 or whatever? Right, that's the way I'd rather do it. Okay, so when you start to look at this, what this says to me too is what? I'm going to have an array that's, that I'm going to call original. And, that, and that I'm not going to change that. I'm going to have another array that I am going to change that I'm just going to call numbers because I'm going to put 25 <laughs> numbers in it. All right. I'm going to have something in here that's going to be called largest, and that's going to be my largest array element. I'm going to have another one in here that's called smallest, and that's going to be my smallest array element. Another thing in here called sum, and another thing in here I'm just going to call it AVG. Does all that make sense? All right, because those are the things that I, I care about working with with a program. All right. I'm going to create a constant that I'm going to call size that I'm going to meet 25. Okay? And if I wanted to change it, so if I said to you instead of 25 numbers I wanted 100, then all you'd have to do would be to change that word size from 25 to 100 and then recompile the program. Well, as we have always been doing, we're going to have an, a, another thing in here that we're going to call again, and that's going to be a Boolean. And that's going to be our program continue variable. Okay. So what I'm showing you basically is how we're going to lay this out. So I'm going to create variables, all the variables that, that you see in here. Okay, so we're going to create all those. Then we're going to write the routines. That makes sense? Now I put some documentation in here, probably not as much as I should have. But get ready to type. So if you have, have not already done so, copy these files over and open up the 150, you know, I, I, I'm going to do the way 1, way 0, 1, then way 0, 2, then way 0, 3. Okay? And I don't care which of these three, because we're going to go over all three. I don't really care which of these three you hand in. But you must key in at least one of them, and it must work. All right? If you turned in the first assignment, and some of you did, it's been graded. It wasn't due yet. So if you didn't turn it in, it won't be held against you. All right? But I had a little time yesterday, because there was this, uh, this semi-pro football team called the Bears that were playing yesterday, and I watched them lose and just felt real good about it. But... Um, while I, while I was doing that, I, I went and graded the ones that were done in here. All right? It was, the assignment was worth 50 points. That's what you were told. All right? And the way that I've decided to grade these was we did two of them as a class. We did the, years pro, or the, the coin flip program and the other one that I asked you to key in. Those are worth 10 points each. The leap year one and the one where you had to do the sum and the difference, etc., those are worth 15 points each. So when you add those together, 15, 15, 10, and 10, it equals 50. All right? I don't tend to put a lot of comments on there unless there's something that's kind of drastically wrong. 
And if you did it and it was okay, I just put something down like all requirements met. All right, so you have a little text file, those of you. All right, and if you didn't do it, it might say that you've got a zero, but it'll say so far. That just means you haven't turned it in yet. That's all. But the assignment, I believe, was due, I don't know what it was, the fourth or whatever. I don't remember. I don't really care. But it wasn't due yet. Okay? This next one, as you can see, is uh, going to be due the 25th. All right? That's three weeks from next Sunday or four weeks from yesterday. All right? Depending on how you want to gauge your time. All right. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start writing the program now. Make sure that you're writing the program in your .js file. All right? So I'm just going to hit enter a bunch of times so I can get back up. All right. So there we go. So I'm going to create a constant, as I mentioned, that I'm going to call size, and I'm going to set it equal to 25. I'm going to put comments here. This will say size of array. 25 elements. 1 through 100, value of 1 through 100. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in about six or seven variables. In the past, when we've been writing programs, our main has either held everything or most everything. What you're going to notice is when we write main in just a minute, because that's what's coming next, when we write main, it'll have about six lines in it total. That's it. That's all we'll have in it. Now, even if you're still typing, please take a look up here for a minute. Do you understand the correlation? So this. We're going to use this because if later we wanted to change the size of our array, if we didn't want it to hold 25 things, if we wanted it to hold 100, we would just change that to 100. And we're going to use size throughout our program. 
so we don't have to use the number 25. That way, again, we only have to change, you know, set it once, all right, and then we can change it. These will be our two arrays, as Roger so, so correctly mentioned. We're gonna have our original array, which we're not gonna touch, and we're gonna have our numbers array, which we will touch, all right? That's the one that we're gonna put in ascending or descending order or whatever we ask for it to be. Notice in here, I've got largest equal negative one and smallest equal to 101. Remember that our range of values is one to 100. Those are both out of range. I think you'd agree with that. That means that the first time I read in a value, it'll become the largest and it'll become the smallest automatically. Okay? Because these are out of range. So we don't have to worry about it. All right. These will be the sum. So this would be like, like with those five numbers I showed you before, the first one plus the second one plus the third one plus the fourth one plus the fifth one. But in here, it's 25. And to do the average, we'll add them all up and then divide by 25. Anything in there that doesn't make sense? Again, this is your chance to ask if you have questions. Yes, sir? Well, why is smallest 101 and largest is a negative one? I could have made them anything, really. All right. But what I decided to do was the biggest number that I'm going to have, the biggest number is 100. The smallest number I'm going to have is 1. So let's just say I do the first number and it's 43. Okay, 43 is going to be bigger than this, and it's going to be less than this. So the first, the first number I read is automatically going to become both the biggest and the smallest. Okay. All right, that's the only reason. I could have made them both zero also because zero is an outer range value if I really wanted to do that. But that gave me the chance to just measure this, and I appreciate the question. Anybody else? All right, so next we're going to write main. Again, main is our program driver. All right. I said main small, it's not that small. In other words, there is stuff in there. Okay. That's, that's all of main. Oops. That's the whole thing. I'm going to let you key that in because I want to go back and, and talk about what's in there. And again, I realize some of you type faster than others. But if you could just stop for a second and look up here, I want to make, mention a couple things. Some of you, when you've been testing, have been using JSBin, and some of you have been using the JavaScript runner, and some of you have been doing it the way that I said we're going to do it from now on, where you've got an HTML file and a JavaScript file. The reason I'm saying this, though, is if you were using JSBin, you may or may not have noticed that if I said while again equal equal true, notice I've got three equals there, that's not a mistake. If you use two equal signs there, JS Bin will say that's not a true test. You should be using equal 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 because that tests both the type and the value. So it says not only is this a Boolean, but is it a Boolean true? All right, so you really should use the triple equals for this. All right, so this says as long as I want to run the program again, and choose menu option and fill arrays, those are both functions. 
hopefully you realize that this is a function and this is a function because after it, it has parentheses. In this case, there's parentheses with nothing in it. In this case, there's parentheses with the name of one of our arrays in it, original. We haven't written those functions yet. So if we ran the program right now, it wouldn't, not only would it not work right, but depending on where you ran it, you'd get an error message saying that you're calling functions that don't exist. All right? But these are two of the user-defined functions, fill arrays, and fill arrays will put 25 random numbers in both the numbers array and in the original array. That's what its job is. All right? And choose menu option, that's going to give us our different menu options. Choose a one if you want to get the numbers, choose a zero to end the program, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to write that in just a minute. All right. And you know what? We don't even need that word original in there. We can leave, we can take that out of there. Okay, it wouldn't hurt to put it in, but we don't need it. So we're going to call choose menu option right here. Somebody tell me, just take a look up on the screen here. What are these things in green? What are those? They're what? Comments. And if you if 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 your screen gets too green and you don't like that, then don't put the comments in. You should at a minimum put in comments like this that explains what your variables are. All right, and have some kind of a thing at the top that explains what the program's about. But if you don't want all these begin and end type of things that I'm putting in there, then don't put them in. You're not hurting my feelings any. But I'm going to keep doing it. All right. So what we want to do here is we want to choose our menu option. And that menu option is going to be ideally a 0 or a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5 or a 6 or a 7 or an 8. Nine possibilities. How would I come up with those? That's what you saw here. Nine possibilities. That's where I got that from. All right. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to choose the menu option. So I'm, I want to call what I'm going to choose. I'm going to call it option, and I'm going to set it equal to zero right now. And I'm also going to have something that I'm just going to call string. That string is going to be really ugly. If you look up on the screen here for just a second, let's see, is this the one that works? Uh, see this thing that's right here. All this that says enter a zero to do this, enter a one to do that, that's what string is going to be. We want to put all that stuff together, then throw it out there in an alert statement. Not in an alert, I should say in a prompt box. All right. So we're going to start filling up the string right now. So when I want to end the program, I'm going to say enter a zero to end the program. Okay? Now, I'm going to do something, and what I'm about to do, you might say, well, that stinks, but I'm going to do it like this anyway. I'm going to have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I don't feel like typing all that stuff. <coughs> so I'm going to do it like this. And then I'm going to come in here and change each one of these accordingly. So that'll be a one. That'll be a 2, not a 20.
Again, that string that you see right there is going to give us this right here. All right, in just a minute. We've got to make a couple more additions to it, but then it will. If right now I did a prompt statement, okay, if right now I did a prompt statement and I, I put string in there, it would put all this stuff in there. But I have to also, when I do this, I have to do what's called validate my data. So I want to say this right now. Option equals parse int prompt string. We'll just put in a one. That's fine. And can someone answer this question? Someone who normally doesn't answer questions. All right. If I run this program and it comes up and it says all this stuff in here and I, I leave it blank or I enter hello, what will the value of option be? If I enter something non-numeric, what will the value of option be? Not a number. Not a number. N-A-N. So I have to check for that. And I have to check to make sure that I don't put in a number less than zero or a number greater than eight. So in other words, right now, I have to validate the input entered for the variable option. And that's what I'm going to do down here. I go a little parenthesis happy, or at least I've been told that, but I'd rather have too many than not enough. So if they enter something that's not numeric, or they enter something that's negative, or if they enter a value that's greater than 8, that's unacceptable. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this same line that we have right there, and I'm going to put it in there. That's the whole routine. One thing I told you before is what we should strive for is whenever we, we create a routine, you know, we create functions, they should all fit on one page. And you notice this one does. All right? And I also told you the smart ass comments that people have made to me when they've done stuff like this. See, mine fits on one page. You know, they just keep making the font smaller. No, that's not what we mean. What we mean is with a regular sized font, which is pretty much what that is right there. Again, the whole thing fits on one screen. That's what you should shoot for. It's not always possible, but that's ideally what you should shoot for. All right? We have one more line in this function, and then we're done. Okay? Does it make sense to people? Please look up on the screen. Even if you're still typing, just stop for a second. Does it make sense to everybody that after we get out to that loop, we're going to put a, another line in here? Well, once we get to that line, you have to have entered a number between 1 and 8, or 0 and 8. Because if you didn't, you're going to be stuck in here. That's what we're doing with the validation. We're making sure that you're putting in an input that we asked you to put in. So once we get down to the bottom here, I'm just going to hit enter a couple times. Once we get down to here, now we've got a, we've got a number that's between 0 and 8. We have to. So we're going to 
and I, this is a really crummy name, but I called it call appropriate function. And it's going to need that option. That's the whole, that's it. So I guess it's a little bigger than one screen, but not much. What this function is going to do is it's going to say if we entered a zero in the program, if we entered a one, generate 25 new numbers and copy them both to the numbers array and copy them to the original array. If we enter a two, show me the numbers in original order. If we enter a three, show me the numbers in ascending order. If we enter a four, show me the numbers in descending order. If we enter a 5, show me the largest value, a 6, the smallest value, a 7, the sum, an 8, the average type of an idea. Does that make sense? That's what we're going to do. And what that will involve, basically, is this, this particular function will do what's called a switch statement. We looked at that earlier in the book. A switch is like an if. But we're basically going to say, if you enter a 1, then do this, else if you enter a 2, then do this, else if you enter a 3, then do this. But we're going to do it as a switch, because it looks a little bit cleaner. You could go back and rewrite it as an if, if you wanted to do so, but you don't have to. All right? So, I'm going to write that function now. This one will be a little bit bigger, but it, the whole thing is just this big switch statement. All right. Now, please look up on the screen here. We said earlier, if you entered a zero, there it was. If we entered a zero, we wanted to end the program. Does that make sense? There is no magical kill command in this particular language. There is nothing. But notice in our main, we tell it to, to keep going as long as again is true. So if we make again false, we're going to essentially kill the program. Does that make sense to you? Because we're telling it to continue running while that variable is true. So as soon as that variable isn't true anymore, so if we give it a value of false, it's not true anymore. So the program should stop. So if it's a zero, what we want to do here is we want to say again equal false and then break, which means get the heck out of this switch statement. So that should get the user out of the program. All right, that should get the user out of the program if we choose that one. Then what do we have left? Well, please take again, take a look up here. We've got to say if it's a 1, we've got to fill the array. If it's a 2, we have to print out the original array. If it's a 3, we need the array in ascending order, a 4 in descending order. A 5 the largest, a 6 the smallest, 7 the average, and 8 the sum. All right, so we're going to have to make 8 more cases in here. So again, if it's case 1, we're going to call a routine that's called fill arrays, which we have not written yet. And we're going to break. This fill arrays that you see right here, you ever notice this? If I go and Highlight all that, see how it's in gray? If I go up to the top of my program, I called it up here. Well, if I double click on it, there is fill arrays. See how it always, I kind of like that feature about Notepad++ when you double click on something. 
because if I spelled it wrong here, so if I put a Y, so two Ys there, I don't want to do that, but then notice the other one is not lit up. It's a quick little way that you can always make sure that what you've entered is correct. So we want to call fill arrays at the beginning of the program, and we also want to call it whenever the user puts a one in there for their option. Why, why fill arrays? Because we said, enter a one to fill the array. That's why I'm calling it fill arrays. And it's arrays here, that should have probably been an S here, but it's okay. Because I'm gonna fill up both the numbers array and the original array. We're gonna write that soon, but we're not there yet. All right, so if it's a zero, we're gonna stop. If it's a one, we're gonna tell it to fill the array. What about if it's a two? Well, we're gonna call print array. And we're gonna tell it what array we want it to print, which is our original array. And then we're gonna break. If it's a three, we're gonna call, these are all functions we have to write. We're gonna write one that's called ascending. And we're gonna break. Oops, now we're gonna have Bria. We're gonna break. If it's a four, we're gonna call one that's called descending. And we're going to break. Question. Yes. What happens if we do not call break? Question was, it's a good question. What if you don't call break? Let's say we put in a one, okay? And let's say right here we forget, we, we, let's say we have a break for zero, but we forget it for all the rest of them, all right? So it's a one. We call fill arrays, then it doesn't see the break, so it comes down and it calls this. And if there's no break there, it also calls this. And if there's no break there, it calls this. So it keeps going. It ignores the word case that's in there. All right? And it does that until it either reaches the end, curly, or until it finds a break. All right? So we've now said if it's a zero, we're going to end the program. If it's a one, we're going to fill the arrays. If it's a two, we're going to print out the original array. If it's a three, we're going to print out the array in ascending order. And if it's a four, we're going to print out the array in descending order. Any questions on any of that? So we've got five, six, seven, and eight to go. So if it's a five, we want to find the largest array element. If it's a six, we want to find the smallest array element. If it's a seven, we want to find the average. Oops. And finally, if it's an eight, we want to find the sum. Now, we're not done yet. And the reason that we're not done is it should not be possible. It should not be possible. Up, up above here, we made sure that you put in a number that's between 0 and 8. If you put anything non-numeric or less than 0 or greater than 8, we keep you stuck in there. So it should, be, it should literally be impossible to get in here and not have a number that's 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 7 or 8. It should not be possible. But, just in case, we're going to put something on the end here that says default, which means if somehow we get in there with something other than that, we're just going to break. We're not going to do anything. So we have to now write functions, <coughs> fill arrays, print array, ascending, descending, find largest, find smallest, find AVG, and find sum. We have to write those. All right, we're gonna do that, we're gonna start that and after, we take, after we take a break, all right? So we have, you know, like I said, there's about 280, 290 lines. We're about half done right now.
Anybody have any questions on anything we've gone over thus far? All right, then let's take a break and come back at five minutes after nine, please.